Marconi's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more. On social media the last few weeks, I've been talking about biltong. Beef jerky, as we know, is like dehydrated and, uh, you know, like really dried version, chewy. Biltong's actually from South Africa. They do like a dry-aged version of, of jerky, but they hate it when you call it jerky. I'm a huge fan of Strive. I reached out to them. It's great when you're drinking whiskey. It's very salt, salty, savory beef. It's, you know, it's, it's perfect. So... They sent me some some Strive Biltong. I will say this. Check it out. If you're going to order from them, order the slabs. So the slabs are a solid hunk of beef and you get a you can slice it into strips and it's fresh dry aged beef and it's fantastic with whiskey. So definitely check it out Strive Biltong just google it S T R Y V E and if you use the code PEAT15 as in whiskey peat 15 they'll give you a consistent not just your first order but a consistent 15% off all your orders definitely check out Strive Biltong they are not paying me I'm just a huge huge fan of their biltong uh we did get a copy for Waterford Irish whiskey I'm a fan uh, or the copy is coming. I talked to Bill yesterday. Uh, I am a huge Irish whiskey fan. I'm a huge Waterford fan. I don't know that it's actually here yet in Texas, but it's coming. Irish whiskey, 100 proof. The whole argument over whether or not terroir exists in whiskey is thrown out the window and backed. All of this is all single farm, single origin, Irish whiskey, grain to glass, beautiful representations of what Ireland can do. Uh, check it out. Waterford whiskey. I'll get a copy. I'll read it eventually. We'll get there. I just want to say I love it. And they are sponsors of the show. This week, I talk with uh, Sean and Dan from the Bourbon Junkies. For those of you who do know, there is a fantastic channel on YouTube called the Bourbon Junkies. Two lifelong friends uh, started a bourbon channel just two years ago, and it has exploded. They are massively fun to talk to, massively fun to drink with. And today, I shoot the shit with two uh, future... God, they're going to be huge. I mean, they're already huge, but they're legitimately, uh, in the last two months, they've doubled their subscribers on YouTube. They're sitting at around 40,000 subscribers. They're blowing up. Couldn't be a bigger fan. So this week, we sit down with these two guys. So without further ado, please welcome Dan and Sean from the Bourbon Junkies. Cheers. Dan, Sean, what's up, buddies? What's going on, what's up, man? man? Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for doing this. I've been kind of uh, it's funny. So I, w- I work a lot from home, and I'll have two screens up, and uh, inevitably I get the notification that you guys are live, and I I gotta I gotta change what <laughs> I'm doing. I gotta pull you up and and chime in. So well, uh, we appreciate you jumping in. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I, I've been I've been a fan for for a little bit. It, it, it's so interesting to see y'all's especially when I, I looked back into you guys a little further you know long before right I found you guys and yeah uh, your your channel had this very very humble beginning very oh <laughs> the humblest the humble is the <laughs> nicest word you possibly yeah. could have used for our early content uh production value was at an all-time like hundred dollars back then <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah well I, I went back and i looked and at, at eight months ago you guys hit 5,000 subs yeah. on, on so YouTube. Fun. It took six months later, which was just two months ago, you guys hit 20,000 subs. And just a couple of days ago, you guys crossed the 40,000 sub mark, which yeah. as, far, as far as I know, besides the Whiskey Tribe, I think you guys are the largest YouTube channel. Um, it's bourbon night is at like 62 K or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, it's interesting because 
Sean and I like look at those analytics because it's so easy to forget when we're putting out content and doing live streams and yeah. busy doing merch launches and stuff like that. And we get busy doing that stuff and then realize, oh, cool, like we hit 40K subs. And then we realize like in January, we we're like, holy shit, we were only at 3,000. Yeah. Like that feels like that was 14 years ago. It took us a year and a half to get to 2,000 subs. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's really interesting. So I, I went up to uh, just a, I'd say probably about a month ago now. I went up to talk to Daniel Whittington. We we went and had cigars over at the you know in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and we were talking about Fred Minnick making the change to do more on YouTube. And early on, because the Facebook bourbon world is so big the way that it is, we mm -hmm. were uploading to YouTube and uploading to Facebook and cannibalizing our numbers. So all of right. our, all of our numbers, all of our views were coming from Facebook yep. and nothing on YouTube. And then yeah. finally, I think it was this year we interviewed Sam Hewen from Outlander and that had such, uh, such a cannibalization. Like I think we saw like 150,000 views on Facebook and another 150 on YouTube. That's awesome. Wow. And well, no ad revenue, right? Like because oh, yeah. or half, half the ad revenue. So, yeah. uh, I, I've been doing this two years and, and have been making a lot of rookie mistakes, just not knowing any better. So <laughs> well, I, I talked to Daniel and he said that Fred had come to him a lot trying to figure out how to, to do more on YouTube. And I, I just watch your videos and I see what you guys have been doing and I couldn't be more happy. I think the thing about Facebook is I, the reason that YouTube's, I, I call, I'm going to say difficult. And the reason that YouTube's difficult is because people have to know where you're at to find you unless YouTube likes you enough to throw you in an algorithm. Group, yeah. Right. So on Facebook, there are communities and the private Facebook groups, especially in the whiskey universe and, and like the media universe, it's so easy to f stumble on things on Facebook, right? Oh, yeah. On YouTube, if you want to find us and, and YouTube doesn't show you, show us to you in an algorithm, you have to literally search for us. Mm -hmm. We have to get lucky that you searched a bottle we reviewed. You have to like, like our that. thumbnail to click on it, right. the title. Facebook's you have to be searching. So, so much less intentional. Yeah. YouTube's so intentional to find a piece of content. So Facebook's about throwing ads for everything in your face. So, yeah. I mean, very easy to find, you know, one bourbon group to another, just typing bourbon in a search bar, you know? Yeah. It, well, and I checked out you guys are doing Patreon as well. I mean, you guys have, have when did this take off for you? That when did you really start realizing, or let me, let me ask this. When did you really start dreaming that maybe you could quit your day job and do this full time? Um, a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I think the idea like six months, maybe. That, I don't know. I would say maybe earlier this year, we, yeah, I'm sure we talked about it last Pro year. I would guess around April. Honestly, because we were about a month into working from home and stuff like that. Yeah. And then, you know, we could do a little bit more stuff for the channel and we were doing more merch stuff and there's just different revenues coming in. And we were like, you know, we, we might be able to do this. Yeah. Um, so someday, someday, not quite there, yeah. but we have stuff we want first, which is the issue. Mm -hmm. Everything costs so much money. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, we have stuff that we want and we need for the channel that we've kind of placed basically before the idea of doing it full time mm -hmm. at this point. So. That's exactly how you should do it. Get, yeah. get everything. Uh, we're in a, an equipment buying mode. I mean, we, we were, yeah. we've been using a, a studio black magic camera for quite some time. Okay. But, but part of my goal uh, is to, to have conversations with actually interesting people. I mean, you and I, Dan, we both share a love for comedy. Right. Uh, Brendan Schaub and the crew from T fat K. Yeah. So one of the things we wanted to do is to be able to do the show on the road, but you can't just cut it with a webcam and a, yeah, yeah of you, course you gotta, you gotta have good equipment. So, yeah. uh, do I, that's exactly what you guys should be doing is, as as much, uh, buying as possible for, for your equipment before, uh, before deciding to just relax. Yeah, it's been a lot of preloading for stuff like that, just so that we have the all the equipment and space is our, our new big battle. Yep. Um, yeah, we, we can talk about the, the hut as it's referred to. Um, we moved out into this one and we thought we had all the space in the world and then everything kind of kept growing. And now we've got all the growing pains of fitting everything in this tiny little space. Yeah, we moved to the hut like... So the channels will be three years old in May. Mm -hmm. And so um, we moved from where like the, the 
terrible pole barn <laughs> with like 13 foot ceilings and the worst audio lighting situation ever. We moved from over there to this building, which they're both on my property. We moved to this building last year and thought like it's about 300 square feet. And it was like, but it'll be a dedicated 300 square feet, which should be great. Right. Mm -hmm. And then like, probably by like February or March this year, we're like, Oh uh, yeah. How do we get more square feet? Mm -hmm. So now that's one of the things that we're going to, we're working on doing before we do, you know, consider quitting our jobs um, is build a new building and a big building that's purpose built with sets in it in, an, in a hangout area and brainstorming area, podcast area, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, so are you guys going to be doing the podcast thing? Cause as far as I know, you guys are just on YouTube, right? Correct. Yeah. And so one of the things actually this year before the pandemic came, um, one of the things I was trying to do was actually branch us out into a different platform. So we were talking, I was talking with a couple different podcasts that are in the whiskey world. Um, and we were going to do a podcast with them this year and try yeah. to do like a little tour so we could be on a bunch of different podcasts over like maybe a month or so that would hopefully help with exposure and help get us to a different platform, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so when Sean, Sean and I right now, a big uh, thing that we're having an issue with is time. Yeah. And so when we have more time, one of the ideas was we would do, it might not be, it won't be completely bourbon related. It'll be bourbon related to an extent, Yeah. but it'll be kind of like the end of our live streams, which is just kind of us like, sitting around bullshit talking and stuff like that yeah whatever yeah. we saw on youtube yeah. a video or something we'll talk about that or something yeah. and just kind of sit back and relax and have a good time but that was i think we've talked about yeah when when we get more time of you know doing this full time we can come here shoot some episodes and yeah. have some fun with that but yeah there are definitely people that we want we want to uh teach us in those ways before we go apart into the podcast world um because that's pretty foreign to us as a, a space, I guess. Well, the, the biggest thing, and, and you know, you, I don't know who all you spoke to. I'm sure dad's drinking bourbon or yep. bourbon pursuit or those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the biggest thing is consistency is, is always releasing no matter what. And that's, right. the, that's the biggest thing, you know, same time, same day, same everything. And that took, I knew that going into it. And even then there's times of the year where I, I just don't have time. And, right. Uh, I hated it, but earlier this year, right after our whiskey festival, I, I took like three weeks off. I just didn't have the time to, yeah. to come in studio. I yeah. live about an hour from here, so. Oh, wow. It's a doozy, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. Whew. Yeah, that's what we did. I talked to Dazzling Bourbon. Um, I talked to John like before that, right? Mm -hmm. And so John was one of the people that I was talking about. We we're going to go on and, and podcast with them, and um, they're great to talk to and, and to chat with. But one of the things – that we do with the YouTube channels, the same idea um, is our Monday and Thursday videos come out every Monday, Thursday at 1130. Yep. Uh, and we've not, mi we've missed like that time twice, but we've never <laughs> missed a Monday, Thursday release since the channel started almost three years ago. Yeah. So the consistency thing, that was something that was made, we made important at the beginning of the YouTube channel too, because like what we were talking about a little bit ago, the discovery and trying to get people to find you. And then like our live streams are always on Tuesday nights at nine because if people, people can that. get into yeah. a habit of watching our content at a certain time, they're more likely to watch it. Yeah. It's got to work that way. Right. Mm -hmm. So just like a podcast. So yeah. Or any other TV show, right. Right. We, we yeah. all remember watching Simpsons on Sunday, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up. So <clears throat> there's, there's, there's pieces that may be pretty common that a lot of people understand about you guys that I don't know. So how did you guys, you guys grew up together? How, you know, how old are you guys? What's what, give me the backstory here. Um, Sean's 21, <laughs> barely, barely of legal drinking age. No, Dan's about really. 54 then. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, everybody calls me old because I'm gray hair. Uh -huh. Sean's got the frame of a child. So that's how kind of how this whole thing works. Yep. Basically, um, <laughs> we went to like kindergarten, preschool. Yeah. We like, went to some baby school together. We played like little league and stuff. But I mean, that that's not things you really remember. Yeah. And then didn't go. Then we came back together in high school. We mm -hmm. were friends in high school, lived together in college. And now well, we're both 31 and we're both here. So, yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, you guys have obviously, there's a, a rapport that you guys have that I think does well. I watched you guys on the episode uh, of Cigar Dojo. Oh, yeah. And loved every minute of it. Obviously, those guys, Eric, I told him right after I watched it, Eric likes to downplay his bourbon knowledge as like, Oh, I'm a cigar guy. But then they, they pull yeah. out Thomas Handy and George T. Stagg and William LaRue Weller and all these bottles. Yeah. We were I'm set like, up. Yeah. Right, clearly, uh, clearly they're guys, you know, they like to play dumb. Like, Oh, I don't know what this is. Is this good? You know, the, yeah. the, I, I wish 
we were like looking back at it. I should have known from like, his like smirk when he was like, all right, let's go through a couple of his bottles. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I wish everybody, the funny, the best part about that whole thing is when we were in like the, cause they do theirs live. Right. And mm -hmm. so we got in a little early and he was explaining like how the show was going to go and whatnot. And he goes, yeah, so we're actually going to go through his closet whiskey collection. And he laughed like you guys are going to make fun of it because yeah. it's not good. That, that's what I thought. Yeah. Initially. He, he set after, you up fully. Yeah. yeah. And then we get there and he's like, is this good? And it's yeah. like a green bottle pappy or something like that. And it was like, is this good? It's <laughs> I've like, never seen one of those in my life. Dude, I, I guess. don't know, man. I'm sure it's great whiskey. I've never had it. So. <laughs> he, showed, he, he, he pulled out – I was doing some math at one point. He pulled out like – valuation wise like four thousand dollars in whiskey <laughs> and you're like i don't know is yeah. this any good yeah he's pulling out like old e.h taylor's that yeah. you can't touch unless you have secondary money here's and... my blanton's yeah. and you're like okay yeah. yeah nope yeah do you guys like jack daniels old number seven or <laughs> how do you feel about that I, I honestly don't even remember where i found you guys or how i stumbled upon you guys i've been in the bourbon junkies group for quite some time and I want to say it was maybe like three months ago. I just decided you guys were definitely in the 20 plus thousand subscriber okay. zone. So about three months ago. And then that one night I just uh, jumped in and you were wearing a uh, Brendan Schaub shirt, a thick boy club. Oh, yeah, shirt. Yeah, thick boy bike. Yeah. And uh, I, I got overly excited because I, <laughs> the, the, the bourbon world, it's difficult. So, I don't know how active you guys have been in Facebook, but about two years ago, the whiskey, well, you, you guys, I'm sure knew about it because you're whiskey tribe fans. If early, so a lot of your early phone, early right. videos, you guys actually made a trip to, to yep. Texas. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So uh, the whiskey tribe guys offer a whiskey certification, a whiskey psalm yeah. cert certification. Yep. And it's something like $5,000. So it's a bit pricey Very for, cheap. but pretty, yeah, a little high. Very affordable, some would call it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, but but it's like a five day course. You go, they put you up in lodging, they feed you the whole nine yards. Okay. And uh, the bourbon world, the bourbon Facebook world, had a complete fucking meltdown. Yeah, yep. Super pissed off at them, saying that it was a <laughs> yeah. ripoff. And um, I had a point to this. What was I going with this? early Facebook days. Whiskey yeah. Tribe. So I, I just, uh, yeah. Oh, I think it was finding us or something like that. Yeah. yeah so I, I, I Oh, I, I remember where I was going with this. So there's everyone lives in an echo chamber. The Facebook mm -hmm. bourbon world is obsessively within their own bubble. Yes. Whiskey tribe guys have cornered the market on YouTube for some time. Yep. Yeah. And, and my love and passion for comedy podcast is always been so outside my bourbon hobby. Right. I mean, I, uh, I always say I admin one of the largest, actually the largest single market whiskey group in North America, the Houston Bourbon Society. And okay. almost zero of those people listen to TFAT K or right. your mom's house or Joe Rogan or any number of these things. So right. when I found your channel and I saw you wearing a printed shop shirt, I had a complete meltdown. I was so excited. And then I kind of, <laughs> I kind of had some over crossover. I overtook your, your comments. And then I felt bad. I was like, I'll send him a message saying that I'm, I just got excited. I just got, you know, I got all giddy about it. Right. Well, the funny thing is first off shout out thick boy bike club. Anyways, sec, That's uh, what make Tuesday night. It's great. I'm, yeah. I'm telling like, I've been listening to firing the kid, I think for about three years. And then obviously like Tom and Bert, like that whole group of people, like, mm -hmm. right. It's like Rogan and Shab and all those people. Right. So two bears one cave, man. Absolutely. Right. Two, two bears on cave is probably one of the greatest podcasts like being done right now in com in the comedy world. But um, it's funny because I started listening to them and then I bought a bike like a year ago mm -hmm. and I never rode it. And then Shab started Thick Boy Bike Club. And I'm like, dude, this fits my lifestyle. He gets me. <laughs> way too well. So then I'm like, I told Ricky, I'm like, my wife, I was like, I'm waiting for this launch right now. I just want a shirt. And then I got that shirt and I got another bike. And now Sean got a bike. Mm -hmm. And now like we have like three or four other people that like we go mountain biking from time to time and stuff like that. But it does one of those things in my head that it, this doesn't cross over to comedy in that way. But I think personally that whiskey was such a serious topic, right? Like if you're talking, like you just said, everybody's so upset about the whiskey tribe or the, I'm sorry, the whiskey yeah. vaults marketing school of yeah. Psalm stuff, calling, whatever. Calling themselves Psalms. Right. And, and how whiskey. much it costs and whatever. Yeah. 
but one of the things I don't care what anybody says, they're the best at marketing. Oh yeah. Period. When it in comes the, to yeah, like, in the whiskey game, in the whiskey tube and whatnot. But anyways, I think that everybody takes whiskey so seriously. And when we started the channel, it was like, let's not right. Like let's enjoy it how we enjoy it, which is like, we give each other a hard time. Mm -hmm. We sit here and bullshit that kind of stuff. But one of the things that I think is changing personally, I 100% believe whiskey is getting less serious. The people getting into whiskey who weren't into whiskey, which seems to be a lot of our crowd. Yeah. It are people who were like, who like the channel and like the type of content because it's not snobbery. Yeah. It's not, ins it's not constantly like pinkies up. Like you can't it's, have fun. It's just two dudes hanging out drinking whiskey. Yeah. You can enjoy whiskey. You can still have a good time. You can mm -hmm. even pick it apart and have a good time. It's not, Absolutely. it's not like this super dry thing where the dry thing in my head doesn't cross with humor well, right. Or com or that type of comedy. Yeah. So with it moving to, in my opinion, with it moving to a space in which people want to have more fun with it and take it a little less seriously. Um, I think comedy crosses over better now. I think it will continue to cross over better personally. Yeah. Yeah. Tom and Bert are, are my uh, great white buffaloes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if I can get, I, there was a couple years ago, the very first time I got to sit down with someone uh, remotely famous uh, was Tom. He was in town. I didn't get him on the show because he was only here for one night. Okay. And, but he invited me to come to a whiskey tasting after the show. Oh, and that's very so cool. cool. And, well, this isn't a braggart moment. This is a embarrassment moment because I am, <laughs> oh. I am 95% sure that I uh, screwed the pooch on that one and embarrassed myself because oh, no. I, I, I can't even put it up to one thing or one thing I said, <laughs> but I go back and I, I've, I've, every time Tom or Bert come into Houston, I always reach out to their, their, their manager. Their right. Publicist. Like, I'd love to have you. I've loved, I mean, Bert, his whole shtick is drinking and 100%. Yeah. Yeah. he just did the dominatrix thing with a bottle yeah. of Buffalo trace. I'm like, dude, yeah. I've got the only radio Come show on in Texas covering spirits. Like, cut, come on. Right. And, and every time it's like, Oh, we're not going to have time or, Oh, we can't make it or every freaking time. And, and then I go back and I look at the photos from that night of hanging out with Tom and uh, Tom does not look like he's having a good time. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I, I, look, I look back and I like, it, it, it boils. You know, it's like when you go on a date with a girl and you wonder if oh, the yeah. thing you said or, or the thing you wore looked, uh, went over well. And I, right. I, yeah. I, Dude, Dude, comes on analyzing this for that many yeah. years, which makes it How even long better. How that joke land? Yeah. Not well? Okay. <laughs> Two years. Two years yeah. it's been eating away at me. And every time mm -hmm. I get a no, I'm like, oh, it's because I screwed up. Uh, and and I, I talk to Brendan quite often. He, he, I know it's so fascinating. Brendan gets so much shit. Like yeah. he, he has the most devout following of people who hate him. Yep, 100%. Yep, we've talked about this, it's yeah. 100%. And, he, and, and honestly, and I mean this with, with – I don't even know that this could be taken objectively. He could not be a nicer guy. Right. And, and I talked to him about this whole Callan thing. I know we talked to you, you kind of yeah. mentioned mm -hmm. it on your show. Yeah. Uh, and, and it wasn't Brendan's decision right. to not yeah. do it with, with Brian anymore. Yeah. Brian yeah. stepped away because the company that handles their advertisers mm -hmm. flat out said that, which is cats media or cast media yeah. said, yep. uh, you know, we, there's no way these advertisers are going to stick around if Brian yeah. stays. Yeah. So Brian yeah. left on his own. Like it wasn't, and, but Brendan, if you follow them on Reddit or, or if oh, you just, if, it's the worst. It's literally you, the worst. If you, you just, Reddit, go, you're already starting off on the wrong foot. So <laughs> yeah. if you just go to my YouTube channel, the video I did with Brendan, it has more downvotes than anything I've ever done. And it's because in the comments are just them tearing and we had to clean it up. We had to, I yeah. we probably deleted 90% of the comments and it's also, Oh, that's the edited version. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's such a weird thing because like you said, he has the most devote following of people who want him to not succeed for some mm -hmm. reason. And I don't know if it's because he transitioned from being an athlete, a fighter to a comedian. And because of the platform that him and Brian had created, and then they were doing live shows and he was going and doing stand up those live shows at the very beginning. And then when he jumped into comedy, I think it maybe it seemed from an outside perspective like how the hell did this guy get here already? That's yeah. not fair. You shouldn't be a headliner when this is your, like your fourth show. But I don't, I don't, I don't get it, man. Because if you go after, and I know people were mad that Callen stepped away, and it was a weird thing how it happened because Callen said he wasn't gonna 
like be quiet and he wasn't going to step down. And then obviously he ended up stepping down and backing off yeah. whatever. Um, and then Josh Wolf carried like that second, you know, the, the co-host, if you go to everyone and I love Josh Wolf to that, like he's hilarious. I think he seems like a great dude. If you go to those YouTube videos, they have the most dislikes. They're like 6,000 dislikes, 1,000 likes on those mm. videos. Good and it's like, why are, why are 400,000 <laughs> people ratio. watching it then? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, crazy, I, I love Josh Wolf as well, but I, I told Brandon, I was like, I think Chappelle and Malik make a better team. Dude, Chappelle and Malik, they could, oh. that can, they could rebrand that podcast at this point, and that could be its own thing. And, that, and that's what it's going to be. I mean, yeah. he, he, I, I, again, I think Wolf's a great comedian. Right. He didn't feel the same. No. Well, they don't have the same dynamic. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Chappelle and, and Malik, they s- seem like they've known Brendan and they've mm. known each other forever. Yeah. And they bring an energy to the show that like Josh Wolf seems like a really calm, chill dude. Yeah. And Chappelle and Malik with Shab, that's the opposite of like calm and chill. And it's fantastic. You get it's some perfect. white water rapids. Yeah, that's well. great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I've been a huge fan. I, they were just in um, – Dallas a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. and I sent a bottle uh, for each of them and some edibles up there for (laughs) (laughs) it turns out Chappelle doesn't drink and I I missed that part so uh, but uh, yeah I I, look I I'm a fan of Brendan not because he's been on the show or I'm kind of uh, there's been some uh, the word cuck has been used a few times on the video (laughs) I did with him but uh I, I, he could not be a nicer guy and in, in private off camera, I, I'm, I'm just a fan of the guy. I, I yeah. Brendan, uh, couldn't, he couldn't be a nicer guy. And I, and I've, the first episode he did on my show, I felt, uh, I got sucked into his comments. I felt the need to like defend him. and Chappelle yeah. or uh, Malik recently talked about that. Like two episodes ago, Malik was talking about how he got offended for Brendan in the comment section and sure. Malik found himself getting sucked in. And I was like, did you just, you, you got to ignore it. You got to move yeah. on. It's interesting because the way that Shab handles social media, and I don't know if this is like the effect. I don't know if this is like the chicken before the egg or right, but the Shab handles social media, like in all of the stuff that he does, he says like, don't read the comments, stay away from social media. Like mm-hmm. he doesn't even run his own Instagram, obviously for the most part. And he's like, I don't read YouTube comments. I don't read Instagram post comments. I don't do that. I stay away from all of it. And yeah. he told Callan to do the same thing when Callum was going through that shit. Right. But so how we handle it and he's, he's wildly successful. Yeah. So I can't imagine he's wrong about everything. Right. But how we handle it is now we're in a much smaller, much more niche community by about a billion percent. So yeah. obviously that's taken with four pounds of salt, and but man are the, the hate comments so much more targeted. <laughs> <laughs> right. But how we handle it is we try to talk to everybody. And yeah. We try to read all the comments. We try to respond to all the Instagram DMS and all the 100%. Patreon messages, but we have a really tight knit community and I don't know if that's because of the responding and his, the, the hate that surrounds his YouTube comment section for some reason is based around him ignoring it. Yeah. But it's, I've never, I don't understand. I've not seen a more toxic YouTube place where they're for the most part, their podcast isn't a toxic environment. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's, it's not, it's really just guys hanging out and shooting the shit. Yeah. Uh, it, yep. It's, it, I, I never understood it. Uh, let's go back to what you just said though. Do you guys get a lot of hate? Cause I've, I've never really jumped through your comments, but it seems like you guys have a lot of support. We don't get a lot, not a lot, but some of it. I mean, some of them, I like I'll send to Dan and be like, you see this? You'd be like, Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we've only deleted a couple. What's the worst thing haters, said? They aren't yeah. super creative, which is the no. bummer. Like usually they're like, you guys aren't old enough to drink whiskey. And it's like, yeah. shut the fuck up, boomer. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's a lot of the hate. Is but, we look too young. Yeah. It's like, I'm not taking any whiskey advice from someone that just yeah. graduated high school. Yeah. Okay. Sound, don't, I guess don't. Don't then. Thanks yeah, the for guy, the algorithm. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah guy, that's the same guy posting memes about the government and Trump and <laughs> yeah. he, some 45 yeah. year old. It feels like his rights are being taken away. A thousand percent mm-hmm. accurate. We actually had, I think the most interesting, I'm going to call it hate. You can use a different word. Okay, which one? The most interesting thing we've had happen was, which made me feel the most famous we'll ever feel probably. Oh, like I Was somebody DM my wife on Instagram and was like, I hooked up with Dan in Ann Arbor two years ago. I'm sorry to say. Yeah. And then my wife, I told, and she was like in a hotel in Ann Arbor. We're not, we're what, two hours from Ann Arbor? Yeah. And I told Ricky, I was like, I've never stayed 
in a hotel in Ann Arbor in my lifetime. Home. Yeah. But the funny thing is my wife walks out and I'm working out here cause I'm working remote and she walks out to the shed and she just hands me her phone and I just died laughing. And she's like, what? And I go, this means I'm famous. You're trying to get canceled. Nobody tries to cancel somebody who's not famous, man. That's it's not, not good for your ego. <laughs> so um, then we tracked it down with some of our Facebook group mods. We tracked it down to a old guy with a beard. Yeah. Uh, like a real old guy with a beard. And I, Ricky messaged him back and she's like, I don't think he likes beard. So I don't know that he's going to be into you. And then they just stopped responding. And I'm yeah. like, well, you know, but that's probably the most hateful thing that like targeted yeah. hateful thing that's ever You're happened. You're trying to ruin someone's marriage. Yeah. That's pretty rough. Fortunately, like, that's wildly different than just being like, that guy's fat and that guy's little. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Which that happened. <laughs> yeah. But that's become a joke. So yeah. it's acceptable now. So, so if you had to, if you had to attribute, both of you a role in the original T Fat K. What, does that mean that Dan's Brendan and Sean is uh, old uh, Rinks? Yeah, like for, sure, for sure. Is Dan I'm Batman, the more Sean's Robin type thing? Who's yeah. like a worse sidekick than Robin? I'm oh. Batman. Sean's like Alfred's kid. Uh, you know Dark, what I mean? Darkwing Duck. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's one of the greatest shows of all time. Yeah. So Sean's universally loved. Dan's the more controversial figure. Um, so the joke, so there's another back and forth. There's another YouTube channel, ADHD whiskey, Matt Porter is his name. Yep. And he started, he started this thing when we had about one and a half subs. Yeah. He started the fire Sean train. Yep. Hashtag fire Sean, which came out of nowhere for no apparent reason, as far as I could tell. It stuck. And it stuck. And so like hashtag fire Sean became a joke. Oh yeah. But in like a loving way, obviously. And so like he just told me he loves me yeah. the other night. It was it's on YouTube. He can't take it away. So <laughs> it's a public video and it's yeah. on our channel. He can't yeah. delete it. But so it kind of it does go back and forth. Like we get nights. Sean came in hot the other night because Sean couldn't drink because he was on antibiotics. Oh yeah. And so, so Sean came to a live stream where I had to do whiskey wars and Sean <laughs> couldn't drink anything but like coffee and water. No, I just got to sit here and watch him spin off. It took me about two hours to do this whiskey war thing where we blind four whiskeys and then rank them, place them, or whatever. And so that couldn't you, couldn't you taste it? Just spit it out. Uh, no. So people, I was even told to like stay away from uh, hand sanitizer too, because it can absorb through your skin. So if I put alcohol in my mouth, there was a chance it would absorb into my bloodstream that way and make me very, very sick. Okay. The antibiotic Sean was on, and this isn't what it was for. Yeah. It's the same class of drug that they give, uh, recovering alcoholics that won't stop drinking. (laughs) Um, so you just has a, a terrible reaction to alcohol and it'll just make you violently sick. Okay. You only had to take it for about two weeks. So it was like, you know what? Or one week. One week. It? Yeah. So I can I take like, a week what? off. I'll take one week off. <laughs> so Sean had to sit through it that night. That was the night where like, it was basically team Sean and oh, yeah. then nobody team Dan that mm-hmm. night. So it does fluctuate back and forth, but we don't, I wouldn't say we get a lot of hate. No. It's just such a smaller community. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I'm sure that you feel the same way. Like you said, you felt the need to defend him in the comments for a little while, right? I f- it feels the same way where you can, if we have 300, 400 comments on a video, 280 of those 300 comments could be hyper positive, very nice, like uh, just great comments. And then there could be five of the two or the 300 that were rude or even like just you seem you come across like a dick. Yeah. In those five, you're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> that guy, I'd like, it just that's how you it works. You see this? That's the yeah. problem with, that is the problem with reading it. But unfortunately, that's our community. So to not read 280 nice comments. To not see the five bad ones. To not yeah. communicate with those people because of five dickheads. Like, it doesn't make any sense, right? But Yeah, yeah. I, 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 d- don't get me wrong. Just sometimes they can be very creatively hurtful. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, like I, that, that interview I did uh, with Anthony Starr from The Boys. Oh, yeah. I just finished that. It's fantastic. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I wondered. So we, what we did is it, it was a very bizarre setup. So we, we flew to L.A. We brought a bunch of equipment. We got set up at the Petite Hermitage, and we filmed in our hotel room. And so, of course, Anthony Starr's publicist is like, go to this hotel, knock on this door, and the hotel we stayed at turned out to be a sex hotel. Oh, oh. God. So, Hell yeah. Hell like, yeah. we found Accidentally. out. Accidentally. Yeah. Well, we found out that it's, it's like a, it's a getaway within Los Angeles. Like, people go, you go with your mistress or you go with your girlfriend oh or you go with your, God. and we didn't know any of this. You and, didn't get that when you rented it for eight hours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we, stayed, we stayed the whole week and we were there for three days. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, 
but uh, and they then had a damn wanted, good time. Mm-hmm. They had this. They had this gorgeous uh, uh, roof overlooking LA, like with a pool and all. And we go up there, and it's just me and my producer Jack, and just two guys. And all of the seating in the pool area is, are beds. Mm. There's no couches. There's no chairs. It's oh, all wow. beds. So each so got you, a bed. It's you, a lot you, of implications. You, you, there. Yeah. you go up there poolside, and you can lay in a bed with who, whomever you like to lay in a bed with. And here we uh, are. And then it, there's no filming allowed up there either because it's topless. <laughs> it's one of the only topless. So we we didn't know any of this. And then of course I answer the door, and Anthony Starr is like, uh, "You're." I'm here for an interview. <laughs> so, uh, so, so after we finished banging, uh, we went ahead and we filmed. Yeah, no, but it was it was he's, a fun he's interview. A good looking dude. I don't yeah, blame yeah. you. The comments were rough though, man. I got tons of tons of like brutal because I I wear a lot of plaid and I've got the red beard and I've got sure. the yeah. glasses. So hipster gets thrown out a lot. Sure, very lumberjacky. Got, yeah, I get a little lumberjacky, and and yeah. I got uh, this one guy said something along the lines of like, "Why do all new millennials look the same oh my god and and he, he's like <laughs> balding or bad hair due to bad genetics uh eyeglasses <laughs> due to bad eyesight due to bad genetics a pubic god. hair beard due to bad genetics i was like hold on like you got me on the first two but this right. this is a good beard this is luscious yeah. <laughs> this, is a beautiful, this is a beautiful beard you dickhead <laughs> yeah how dare you but uh, it, it's that guy really was weird. also 85 and lonely if yeah. it makes you feel better you know it's really mean? good when you comment back to those people about like they'll they'll re-comment on their own thing be like oh i meant this and it was like you know you can edit on youtube comments <laughs> but you're so old you don't know that <laughs> okay those i just those people i gotta think about it like this how i've never went to somebody's youtube video and then not liked what I watched. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've, I've done that part. Enough to comment. I've never done it to the point in which I was like, dust off the old keyboard. Here we go. <laughs> and then it was like, you guys suck. This is a terrible video. Yeah. How little do you have going on that somehow that feels fulfilling? Like you got to find friends or a hobby or something. That's Anything. such an unfulfilling anger filled hate. Like, I don't understand that. That seems That's so therapy, insane man. to me. Well, the, the thing that I don't, I get the opposite of that. Like, like I said, I saw you wearing the thick boy bike club shirt and I right. felt this inspiration interact with you. I was like, Oh shit. Another comic fan. Right. And, uh, but never the opposite. I've never watched something. I've been like, I'm outraged and I feel the need to, to comment and be sh- shitty about it. You know? Yeah. Somebody, what it, we've gotten like comments in the past where somebody was like, you should do your videos this way. And yeah. it was like, then you go start a channel. Yeah. Because we'll do whatever the hell we want here. Yeah. We made this. Because someone was like, uh, I guess just turn on a camera, get drunk, and say things or buzzwords about whiskey. I was like, if only it was that easy yeah, dude. to do YouTube. Yeah. No editing goes into no. this. What well, you should watch our old videos. They're the exact same. Yeah. <laughs> In the same spot with no extra work done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, man. I don't know. People like to, some people like to be hateful, I guess. So uh, to pivot here, I sent you guys or I had – uh caroline sent you guys a a sample mm-hmm. did you guys get a chance to try it it is we, in the glass right we both now. just poured it oh, okay i'm gonna do the same i had to go pick up a little sample myself while you do that i like that and i don't think anybody got to see it but you just pulled like five bottles of whiskey out of that black bag next to you and it was awesome oh yeah yeah we started, so, uh, like, uh, i'm almost ready as he uh, pulls out bottle after bottle is it a uh, four roses and a mictor's rye no, uh, it's a bourbon supreme, an old seventies bourbon supreme dusty. Oh, Ooh, and okay. uh, I just saw like the green neck tag there. Until- yeah, and then I've got a little old crow travelers. Those are those oh, are nice. great. Oh, dang. Uh, but yeah, those those bottle limos. So uh, part of part of what I do is in the hobbyist world. Obviously, I'm like you guys. I go to bottle shares. I share bottles. The other side is I kind of work in the industry. I have my own brand, uh, I'm bottling my own products. I have a whiskey oh, festival. Awesome. I have all these other things going on. And these bags, these bottle limos, I'm telling you, go to Amazon, type in bottle limo. They're meant for wine bottles, but liquor reps, they've got wheels on the bottom. You just travel it around like luggage. So you oh, can, you go over to a friend's there. house, you take 12 bottles with you and you don't have to carry around in a box. You've got a little bottle limo. So That's these, awesome. things, are, these things are great, yeah. man. That's a super good idea. Man. So, did you guys get to try it before, or is this your first try? Uh, I just happened. I tried it yesterday when Booyah. it got here, and the way that I tried it was definitely not out of the bottle. It's definitely not not out of the definitely bottle. Definitely not out of the bottle. Yeah. 
like your Mizanura Oak Angel's Envy. <laughs> oh, man. Have you had that? No, I refuse. Yeah. Thank God. You know what? We should have refused. I sat on that stupid website. Now, I know I work in IT. I get the technical issue thing. Yeah. I know it happens and whatever. Apparently, they weren't prepared. They didn't stress test enough. Anyways, I sat on that stupid website for almost two hours to get that bottle. And then we paid three fifty plus tax for it, and then we drank it, and then it was still terrible. Like you figure at some point that experience would have gotten better. You know, dude, got a uh, cool crystal decanter it's, eventually. That part is, I will say, Angels did a very good job, or Love whoever made the crystal decanter is fantastic. Yeah, that's all I'll say. Yeah, so the whiskey's not good, huh? Dude, it tastes like weird dickle. Yeah, I yeah, I really thought like Klein was pulling a fast one on us at first. I was like, this tastes like. Dickle. Klein picked it up for us because he was in Kentucky. That's at the beginning of our uh, that Angels Miser Renata Bob cask, whatever it's called. That bottle was opened by Klein. What there. was that? I can't pronounce that language or whatever, dude. Miz I don't know. Miz there you go, dude. We have an expert here. I can lean on him right now. Like that's, not, I, I am not an expert any more than you guys are an expert. I just I'll, drink a lot. <laughs> Well, okay, if you drink a lot and can pronounce words, that yeah. literally terms you an expert. Expert, for sure. <laughs> in my book. Yep. We'll just use this as my book. Though. Okay. Um, I can't – dude, honestly, my – now, my wife came in. Um, Sean thought I drank it before he shot that video because yeah. it was open, obviously. And uh, my wife came in, and she took a drink, and she's like, ooh, I really like that. And I looked at her, and I go, that's terrible news. Getting, she goes, news. why is that? And I go – I can't imagine we paid $350 for a bottle that you like and we like. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Like, yeah, my I'm wife doesn't drink any whiskey at all. So, I, I, at that price point, the, so uh, do you guys drink other stuff besides bourbon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the guy that helped start Whistle Pig, a guy named Raj Bakta, started yep. oh, yeah. moving into the, the uh, Armagnac cognac brandy space. Okay. And he tracked down and did a blend of barrels that the youngest barrel is 50 years old. The oldest barrel is 150 years old. It's from the 1800s. Wow. Blended wow. it together and threw it into a peated whiskey barrel. And it tastes like peated whiskey. But at that age, it's, it's not going to taste good anyways. Right. Yeah. Oak. So it's really the, the peated whiskey barrel really kind of covers up how grossly oak and tannic <laughs> this thing is. That's uh, but for a blend of – it's like seven barrels – and a blend of 50 years old to 150 years old, it's $300. It is objectively a good piece of history, a good sure. value. I'll pay $300 for that. Yeah. I am not, however, paying $150 for anything <laughs> that Angels Envy has to produce. So the, 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 the other worst, LEs that they've done, well, uh, we've enjoyed a lot. But now we, I completely agree that we've enjoyed them. Yeah they would be really good at a hundred dollars oh, they'd be amazing at a hundred but they were two one was 250 yeah nope. one was 200 nope <laughs> so <laughs> wait so here's here's the best part about the mizanara nailed it you no. got it Steve, nailed it. you're not the expert he's the expert we're moving on this is my book so anyways so the best part about that whiskey is the fact that it's blended four-year-old and nine-year-old nine. whiskey yeah. how in the hell are you putting four-year-old whiskey I don't care if that bottle cost $285, like the glass, yeah. the crystal. The fact that the whiskey in it is four and nine years put together, don't have any issue with blending whiskey, right? Nope. The four-year whiskey, in a, any four-year whiskey in a $370 bottle of whiskey is insane to me. That's, that's the problem with it. I'm not saying that Angels Envy doesn't produce good products. I've had a lot of great – I love their cash strength offering. But there's right. a, are, you, are you guys familiar yeah. with Wade? With what? With a guy named Wade? I don't think so. Okay, so there's a very notorious character in bourbon, a guy named Wade Woodard, who kind of holds brands accountable. And okay. he did an actual, and I'll send you a link to the spreadsheet, but he did a spreadsheet that breaks down value, value what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, value uh, per dollar? Or like yeah. the, the whiskey per dollar? Like yeah. as a taste, as what you're pouring, or paying Correct. for it? Yeah, okay. so basically price per ounce for a standard offering and then yeah, the cash drink version, right? So like if you go uh, Elijah Craig, $30, great bottle, great price point, 90 sure. proof. If sure. you go from the $30 expression to the cash strength, barrel strength version of Elijah Craig, it's $60. Mm -hmm. You go, Elijah, you go Angel's Envy, so it's about double the price. But Angel's Envy, their standard offering is 45 bucks. Yeah. yeah. Their cash strength offering is now four times 
their standard offering. That's where I have a problem with Angel's Envy. So if if, if they released the cash strength at 90 bucks, I'd buy it all yeah. day. Oh, for sure. I completely all agree. All day. Yeah. That's supposed but to be I, in all 50 states this year. I, I like that whiskey a lot. The Angel's cask, the, the barrel strength cask, yeah. I, I like a lot. It was... It's still one of our favorite finish. finished yeah. whiskeys. It's but a good product. It mm-hmm. is. Like you said. Unfortunately, it's two hundred dollars. Here's, here, here's what I'd be interested to know. Your thoughts on... And I'm sorry if I derailed the, the bottle of whiskey that we we're talking about. But no, it's, the, the 80 to $120 price range yeah. is full of garbage. Yeah. Specifically, we find more or less the 80 to 100. Yeah. Like right in that price point, like you're just ruining your value. You're not getting anything really worth that price point. Yeah. There's better bottles, cheaper. And if you spend a little bit more, you can get a better bottle. So, so the diminishing returns seem so high right there. Yeah. So there, that, there's a couple of thoughts on that. And, it, and it, you didn't completely derail the subject. Part of the reason why I wanted to, to send you guys that sample is to talk about valuation. So uh, you're absolutely right. Most people, there's a ton of companies out there sourcing anything from six-year-old to 10-year-old. I mean, Sam, uh, Sam Houston uh, we did the first blend with them. So the, the very first edition of Sam Houston that you guys have, have tasted on the show, yeah. uh, we blended that. That was us, oh, really? the Houston Bourbon Society. So they, they sent us so samples. Cool. It's 12 year old, 1792, basically. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it was originally supposed to be a hundred proof and we were really pushing to get them to do it at cash strength. And of course okay. it released at 90 proof. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it tastes like really old, uh, really old 1792, a 12 year old 1792. It's a bit yeah, sure. oak, oak Ford. It's okay. But at 90 bucks, it's a bit of a tough sell, even at 12 sure. years old. I, the very first episode I, I chimed in on you guys uh, on, and I see it on your top shelf behind you, uh, Owen Powell's bottles. They're, they're eight year old or something like that. Uh, somewhere in that range, but it's like this, it was like 70, 80 bucks or something. The first bottle, it's okay. I just, mm-hmm. I, I, I and I, and I think it would be great at 60 bucks. I, are those, the, are, you, are you referencing the Fern Creek bottles? Yeah. 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 Those, those were sent to us. Um, there's, we have a buddy in Kentucky who just sends us stuff that he knows we can't find up here. Right. Yeah. That's how we got the Sam Houston's initially. Um, so real quick, cause I don't want to forget that okay. Sam Houston 12 though, hear me out. Okay. If you've had 1792 age 12 year, I think that that Sam Houston crushes the 1792 yeah. age 12 year. And I know the age 12 year was around 60, 70 bucks, I mm-hmm. think. Um, oh, like seven bottles. But nobody could find yeah. it. And it went for way more in different places on the market. Obviously, stores were marking it up, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that Fern Creek stuff is super interesting because, first off, I love like the vintage old school label. I think that yep. looks so stinking cool. The, I don't know. It's so... That being $80 for me starts to hit, like, if this is a craft distillery, I'll pay a little more to support them if I like it, right? Sure. Um, if I'm Welcome in a to Texas co- whiskey. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, now, if I'm going to, if I can buy an Old Forester 1920, or you're putting that out and you're not a craft distillery, yeah. I got to go Old Forester 1920 for 60 bucks. Yep. I have to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I, don't, I, I don't disagree at all. Uh, and that's, that's the unfortunate state of bourbon right now is uh i i liked owen i liked fern creek it didn't taste yeah. bad it was a little got a little bit of a youthful bite a little yep. bit heavy on the ethanol but uh, it's a solid bottle but it'd be solid at 60 yeah I agree. at 90 100%. i'm having a hard 80 i forget the exact price point i think it's 80 so yeah. 80 and change yeah, yeah it's, just, it's, it's, hard just, to, it's, too, uh, it's too much foot the bill on the the startups when you're a craft yeah so there's that, a lot that, of crafts like yeah that's what dan said you know you pay a little bit more to support a brand that you enjoy the product i yep. guess just to help them out, hopefully down the way, either the product gets better or cheaper. Yeah. That's your hope. Yeah. And that brings me to the, the sample in front of you. So that's, that's a private, uh, we're, we're going to be bottling under a new label called Prideful Goat. Uh, 15, <laughs> so Doc Swinson's is 15 year old Heaven Hill juice for 130 okay. plus tax. So 145 for 15 year old Heaven Hill is the, as far as I know, is the cheapest independent bottler of Heaven Hill liquid at 15 years old. I, I can't think of another one below okay. 125, 130 plus tax. But okay. Yeah. That is gonna be $90. Okay. So for 15 year old. Yeah. 15 year old cast strength Heaven Hill for, for, for 90 bucks, yeah. Wait, wait, so you mentioned earlier that you 
bo- that you have a label to yeah. bottle under, right? Yes. Is that the is that what you're referencing right now? Yeah. So so I don't own what you're tasting. Okay. Uh, the, it, it hasn't been announced yet, but <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, how do I? Yeah. Let me be careful here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so lawyers, <laughs> I I don't own this brand, but we're going to be doing uh, a lot of bottling with this brand under this. Label. Okay. Uh, there's okay. a guy locally in Dallas, a guy named Randall Sullivan. Uh, him and I invited a bunch of people from our clubs to go taste some and blend some 15 year old heaven hill juice that is the first release that's supposed to be released soon i designed the label uh the logo the name all of that was me uh and it will be released this fall hopefully before christmas for under 100 bucks oh that's okay. amazing dude. yeah um so just getting into this i like we were sitting here talking and i was like what could this be and now that i smell it i would never guess this is heaven hill like, yeah. not once yeah, so there's there's a to expand on that. There's Sean and I get often, and yeah. some of the ECBPs are where we kind of venture off where we don't get it as much. Yep. Sean and I often on a lot of Heaven Hill products get like a funkiness that comes out of Heaven Hill through a yeah. lot of their product lines. Right. I'm telling you, it's the wood they use. <laughs> and so, in whether like EC18, yeah, we get that funk. Like some of like the cheaper products, we get that funk from them. But it's something that kind of like lives through their line. When I first drank that, I thought to myself, and you texted us and told us, you know, what, what, what you was. just told yeah. us right now. And I drank it. And I'm like, dude, the, what I get from this is like a wildly off profile ECBP. Logic okay. Yeah. And because then because it's not that weird funk. Yeah. You don't get all the nuttiness that some of the Heaven Hill products have. Yeah. It's very sweet. But Okay, I was going to say it's closer in my mind to some of the um, Eagle Rare stuff, that meaty note that I get You're out of it. talking like the store pick, the yeah, weird store you, picks? Yeah, there's like a little funk that you'll get in Eagle Rare, and it's super prevalent on the Eagle Rare 17, that it's like, it's meat. It literally smells like steak. So um, is, that a good, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I love it. No, no, no it's, it's fantastic when I get that. We get it on Eagle Rare 17 as, as what, what we've good also That's said before yeah. is like fry, like when you cook bacon and that aroma that you get of the grease and like the fat cooking yeah. from bacon is so good, right? Yeah. And a lot of times there's like a lot of really high-end whiskeys that we get that note on. Um, was King Kentucky one of them? Uh, there were some really high end bottles we got that note on. Yeah, I'm and trying to remember. It, what for me, what it references is it like a sting. richness, yeah, like a fullness of flavor. Yeah, there's like an oiliness about the nose that you know it's going to coat really well, and it does. The fact that this is under a hundred dollars with the like the white, we'll call it the tech specs that you yeah. just put out, is insane to me. Yeah. So we we are, uh, I think obviously, I think a lot of people don't realize what goes into pricing bottles. Uh, mm-hmm. that Mizunara Oak glass decanter, let's just say, I'll, I'll give you a, a great example. I believe, and I could be wrong unless it's gotten cheaper for them, but Peerless is top. Yeah. So Peerless is heavy, four ounce, solid steel death ball of a top yeah. <laughs> is, yeah. uh, is eight to $10 their cost. Whew. So what yeah. that translates That's to crazy. is at, when it goes to the distributor, they're going to add their markup on top. Let's just say right. 30%. Right. So mm-hmm. now that, that eight to $10 top is now $12, give or yep. take. Uh, then they add on 30% to go to the liquor store. Yep. So now it's a $15 top as part of the final price. Yep. And then when the liquor store sells it, they add on 30%. So you're talking <laughs> yeah. about a two-year-old rye and $20 of the bottle price yeah. is just the metal topper. Sure. So I'm all for us putting some effort in some label design and making sure yeah. label, like, you know, who does a really good label and that's uh bell meads cash strength. That soft paper with gold foil. Yep. Like they put a lot of effort in their actual label design, a lot of money in that label. Sure. They're not in a box. It's not wax right. dipped. It's yeah. not. Yeah. You know. Okay. So, so the, the cost for cash strength, 10 year old MGP from bell mead is sixty dollars? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. Which is wild yeah. to me. Yeah. That it's, I mean, that it's, it's that price. It's fantastic. And yeah, and look, I love Pinhook, but we the last Pinhook barrel we did was four years old, four year old rye from MGP for sixty five dollars a bottle. It's a tough sell per bottle. It's a tough sell. Man. So this this 
independently bottled new label that's coming out. You guys are the second civilians to drink it. The first pair to drink it was was Brian Callen and Brennan Shaw when they were. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah. They probably hate that's it. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, so, dude, thank you so much. Yeah, 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 we really do appreciate that. So when you when it does come out, are we talking? It's launching in like certain states. Like what kind of market distribution wise? Yeah, yeah, so that's a great question. So the first run will be about a thousand bottles full statewide distribution, the whole thing's going to spec. So it's not okay, getting, it's okay. not seeing outside of Texas just yet. Okay. Uh, but we got to take care of the clubs first, right? Right. Yeah, of course. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So our, our club is 10,000 members. There's a few Dallas clubs, sister groups that, that drove down here to help us pick. Everyone's sure. going to want their fill first. Yeah. yeah. But we, we've kind of evolved past barrel picks. Barrel picks are 150 bu- or 150 bottles, give or take. Yeah. The, gr- mm-hmm. the groups are so big now, it's hard to keep up with demand. So, Enter a private blend, fifteen-year-old Heaven Hill cast strength release, and that's then we insane can, to me. That, can dude, do, that's incredible. My whiskey club is so big, we got a label. Is what I just dude, heard. That's the greatest. <laughs> that is might me might be one of my favorite statements of all time. Uh, well, it's it's just it's hard to keep up. People get yeah. so angry. You just mentioned the problem with the. Uh, I'll give you an, a great example. So back in February, th- two years ago, we did a trying to solve this problem, we did a seven barrel release or seven project because one of them was not whiskey. Okay. Based off the movie Reservoir Dogs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you remember Mr. Pink, Mr. Brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So our group has gotten so big, one barrel just isn't enough. So what we did is we did a seven barrel series. Mr. Brown was Eliza Craig. We did a beer release, 1600 beers. Uh, It was a, a barrel aged coconut stout Oh my God. Called Nice Guy Eddie. Oh, that sounds fantastic. I was going to say, we, we just had a, wasn't that a coconut stout? We, that we, we just tasted had? a coconut stout to yeah. help barrel age something. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, so we, we partnered with a brewery. We gave them our empty barrels. They put beer in it. Then we did our own beer release. So the last one for the release was a Four Roses release titled Mr. Pink. Okay. And when we put it on sale, we did it online only. And the entire barrel sold out in 30 seconds. Treat yourself, please, dude. And and the and and the vast majority of people who put it in their cart by the time they put in their credit card information, yeah, uh, it had been sold out. Right. So gotta have that auto save, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> know your security code. It saves the time. <laughs> so the outrage and the fury over that was just too much. So we're like, okay, well, how do we fix that? So we're doing a a four square rum release for the state of a thousand bottles. We're doing it. Cool. cool. Yeah. Four square makes good shit. Yeah. 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 We, we're doing an Armagnac release of 600 bottles. So we were just, we're trying to scale up a little bit and trying to keep the, cause I mean, you know what it's like the bourbon community is rabid, uh, yeah. rabid right now. It's, it's yeah. hard yeah. to keep everybody happy. What a great idea. We got to talk after this podcast. And that's what I was just going to say. We got to have a conversation. <laughs> Low key here. Yeah. I love that idea though. I think that you, like, obviously that's a problem, right? So this is one of the things that we're working on with Patreon is, mm-hmm. is barrel picks and then our patrons being able to buy the barrel picks that we do, yeah. right? Um, our Patreon realistically has outgrown, like you just said, has outgrown anything that we can do pick-wise. Yeah, well, we started this idea and we could satisfy patreon at the time at the time <laughs> and then now it's kind of grown and we're like oh gosh yeah um, yeah i mean you guys are like clearing like seven thousand a month on patreon you guys are killing it right now i wish give or take yes. give or take yeah give or take <laughs> give or take depends on the month uh, yeah. but no but it's it's a great thing that's been growing and it's something that we appreciate a lot so mm-hmm. one of the things that we spend time on when it comes to channel stuff is trying to make sure we run polls in Patreon to see what we can do to try to make it worth whatever anybody's spending there, right? Mm -hmm. If you're spending two bucks a month to be there, are you getting the content that you were hoping you would get while you were here or $2 a month, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Now the people who are spending more, like, do you feel satisfied at what, what you're getting for, right. you know, what we're offering? So we're trying to do barrel picks, but we do live in Michigan and Michigan happens to be a hyper restrictive state and COVID. Yeah. And yeah. It's been and, rough. and the Rona, but anyways, yeah. the, um, how, how it's working is we, the problem, Sean and I are pretty picky, which is probably our actual That issue. is going to be, we, yeah, we could have, we have passed on stuff that we could have done by now Barrel pick and wise, fulfilled. Yeah. And it was like, I just, I don't want to give people a shitty product. If though. we're not going to drink if, it, we yeah. can't do it. I'm not standing by what I'm selling. It's just, it, it's not a good look. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you guys could totally do it too. And I, I think at the very least you guys 
are perfectly primed, just like the crowded barrel guys to, to do, yeah. to do something yourself, you know? Yep. They yeah, had a crazy operation. They have a really they cool going situation. Over there. They're very, very smart. They've yeah. done a really good job. Um, like I said, with marketing, honestly, we have a couple Eleanor bottles in here. If I go back, yeah. I, I'm a part of their Patreon so I can buy uh, their releases. They do like the Texas blends. Mm-hmm. And then they do obviously their Eleanor's. We bought a rye and stuff from them. But it's one yeah. of those things where it's like they're putting out stuff and they're making a lot of content off putting that stuff out which is perfect because it cons- it's consuming itself. Yeah. So their product creates content and they need content for their YouTube channel, which helps sell their product. It's per- it's such a good idea, but I'm telling you this um, situation that's on the table in front of us on point. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, if yeah, this I'm is what's excited. to come, man, I, I think you're set, dude. That's fantastic. Well, we, this is the only, like the one thing we didn't want to do with bottling stuff is we, I don't want to touch Kentucky bourbon unless it's completely different than the 99,000 other brands out there. Sure. So we're not touching eight to 10 year old. We're not touching 12 year old bourbon, but 15 okay. year old heaven Hill at cash strength. Yeah. I mean, that's what's not to, what's not to love about that. So, uh, I, I tell you, this kind of disproves one of our theories what's that? that heaven Hill can't. No, age. we said 15 was the prime. Okay. We said All that right. he, Elijah Craig 18 is hot trash because it's too old. Yeah, maybe because it's proof down. I don't know, but it's too old. Well, no, we it's said, proof down to help cover up, to help water down the the tank. It's so wood. It's so wood. Yeah. I've never had a outside of Dickel's nonsense. Rhetoric twenty five is less woody than Elijah Craig eighteen. It's you know what? It's better. Yeah. Rhetoric twenty five is better, and mm-hmm. it's a lot older. Oh, I got a question for you. If we can ask you questions now. Oh sure, sure. Oh hell yeah. All right. I guess. Hold on. I I don't. This gets wild. I don't know what's going on over here right now. Like Dan's brain just light bulb. All right. All right. Have you have you had Sweetens Cove? Yeah, it's called Dickel Ball and Bond. Okay. The fact that you sighed. Anybody listening needs to see the visual of you sighing before you respond. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. We had it. That is one of the most. Now, I know a lot of whiskey. I know whiskey's big, and I know celebrity whiskey obviously carries a name with it. It's very subjective, too, Dan. Sure. It's It's heinous. It's what? It's heinous. (laughs) Yeah, so it's heinous. uh, It's heinous for a few reasons. So, uh, listen, I I, I like Marianne Barnes. Uh, She's she's a a good person. Sure. Uh, But, look, I'm trying real hard to be nice. Uh, the, it's they sell thirteen year old bottled and bond, yeah, blended dickel for thirty five bucks, yeah, on the high end, right? I understand you have to. I understand you have to pay a celebrity. I understand sure. that, right? But the the differentiation from thirty five bucks to was it three hundred? Two hundred and yeah, like, I, retail's two hundred, but yeah. obviously markup and whatnot. So yeah, that's that's absolutely offensive, dude. And and, I, and I, I, the problem and the big problem with celebrity brands is you can launch a brand off celebrity. Sure, they'll sell the first 10,000 bottles. Uh, Go yeah, ahead. for sure. But there'll be no sustainability and you will not right. receive a second check. You will not, right. there's no longevity. And, and going back to Sean's point earlier, you don't want to put out anything crap because once you burn your audience, that's it. Mm-hmm. Right. They, they, might, they might buy one bottle of Sweetens Cove. Yeah. And then uh, right. they'll either get divorced or commit suicide because of garbage. <laughs> the best part about the Sweetens Cove thing is, in my mind, what you do is you come out with a hitter, right? Yeah. Sweetens Cove Batch 1, monster whiskey, not Dickel. Then you switch to Schmickle. And then if you want to trick people and you still don't want the longevity, but you got your paycheck and you don't care about your community at all, then you switch to Schmickle yep. and you make sour, rotten whiskey. Really, You know what that's called? That's called the Kentucky Owl business model. <laughs> oh because, because the Kentucky Owl rye Batch 1 was delicious. Yeah. And then they jacked it up $50 yeah. and reduced the age by two years. Yeah. And it was a completely different product. It was garbage. Dude, the fact that – so it makes me feel sad in my heart that Stoli is running that name into the ground mm-hmm. because – and I don't know Dixon. He seems like a great dude personally. Yeah. He, I, and I never met him, so I'm saying this as a person who hasn't met him or, or even chatted with him a whole lot. But – he seems like a great dude, and he seems like when that brand initially started, he seemed like it seemed like such a heartfelt thing, right? 
I've heard that, and I haven't had them, but I've heard the Kentucky Owl batch bourbons, like one through four, were absolutely amazing. Monsters. Um, we had, is it, was eight or nine the nine. newest release? Nine. We had nine, and it was good whiskey. Yeah, but we couldn't justify the it wasn't it for neither neither of us thought it was worth 300 bucks we yeah. have uh we had kentucky all batch one two and three rise mm-hmm. i personally like the rise way more than i like the bourbons of course yeah. yeah um and those are cheaper than the bourbons which is crazy because rise are more expensive grain mm-hmm. which seems insane to me but um i think that i, I feel so sad that stoley took it and then thought let's just continuously let's raise the price yeah. until we can build a theme park with kentucky all, <laughs> all over it yeah, oh. and it was already supposed to be open, and it, it hasn't. It's, it's been delayed. You know why? Because distributors and stores all over the U.S. are sitting on $300 yep. bottles. 100%. Out. Yep. Yeah, we, we know a store that's got a well, couple dude, of them. So how interesting is it, in my mind, and I don't know a lot. I know the amount about marketing in which my wife has told me because that's what she does, and then I know what I've learned from doing YouTube anything, right? That's it. So when it comes Ooh, to marketing, yeah, let's call it like I'm not that great at it but I've tried. So the idea that you've made $300 bottles of bourbon and $200 bottles of rye. And like you just said, a lot of those whiskeys are sitting on shelves places only due to price. The whiskey inside of them isn't bad. It's a price issue. So what you decide to do is release a $1,000 bottle of whiskey. Very limited though. That's insane to me. (laughs) We're not selling two and $300 bottles. Let's release a thousand dollar bottle. Yeah. That, that packaging, by the way, is a good forty dollars of that price, but but what about the rest? The liquid could not have cost anywhere near that. No, and we have a friend that sent us samples of one. Yeah, and it's good. It's fantastic whiskey. Unfortunately, they added a comma in there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's such good whiskey. And now, would it even? And I don't know. We haven't blinded it. We've never blinded. It. We've only drank it, knowing what it was. Yeah. Would we? It wouldn't probably place top three of 2020 for us. I don't think so. Even so far, we haven't even had BTAC yet. So yeah, like we're gonna get some. We'll like, taste it, your it probably. Yeah. Optimism. Yeah. So I, I like I, I like this. I like uh, you got any more questions? Anything else you want me to bash? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because the Sweetens Cove thing seems to be there are people who believe that it's a collector's item, right? Yeah. Um. And by, de- by definition, I think it might be. Right. With Peyton's right. name on it, too, yeah. attached to it, um, it being a limited As release. It's very limited. Right. It's an interesting thing. Um, Unfortunately, like, I think it was in the behind the scenes or something like that. I was like, do you think Peyton just, like, tasted it and spit it out and was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do with this. I, was, I don't well, know, man. Take I, a have shot. you guys seen the bottle in person? It's got kind of this wide... Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of this. You know, it kind of looks like his forehead. It's like it's all <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of a lot of a lot of empty space. You know, it just kind yeah. of. That's fair. I didn't. You know, we didn't take that in consideration no. in the review. It's a pretty bottle. It. It's. It's. That's. Somebody sent it to us and was like, somebody messaged me and was like, "Do you guys want to try this?" And I'm like, "Sean will hate this for sure. Send it. We'll send it back." Oh yeah. And so he sent it, and we. I was drastically. It was worse than my expectations. Yeah. So much work. I, I went in clean conscious, like, all right, I'm not going to have any pre-deposition about this bottle. <laughs> Got it. Nailed Words. it. Um, and it was you know, still deposition a is, Deposition is what you do in court. A pre-disposition yeah. is what you're looking for. There you go. I'm, a, I'm an expert. You know what I wanted to say. <laughs> it had two it, it. Bit, like, throw letters we at it. We made it eventually. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a while. Yeah. And I was so let down by it. Already, like, I don't know. It's just... Are you a Dickel fan? Dickel. Nah, God, no. Neither of us like Dickel. I okay. literally so, just got sent a sample blind, smelled it, went, that's Dickel. I'm not drinking that. <laughs> so and, let, me, let me pitch you on something. Uh-oh. I like have, you had, have you had Dickel 17 year? No. And you guys love tobacco. You guys are cigar heads like myself. I love a good cigar. Uh, now, it's been a while since I've revisited. It's funny, like in this bourbon journey – you'll have something that you like early on and you come back years later and you're like, Oh, yeah, this is garbage. Absolutely. Why did I like that? But yeah. so it's been about two years since I've had it, but in my head, I distinctly remember falling in love with Dickel 17 year. Mm. So it, I don't know if they still release Everyone it. Everyone has a right to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> have you had it? Have you had it? We no. have it. I've never, no. I don't think I've even seen it. Honestly. No. So older, older Dickel is heavy on the tobacco notes and I, okay. and I'm a, and I'm a fan of older Dickel. I'm not okay. a fan of younger Dickel. 
That's and, interesting. Uh, Even 12 years is just stop not, giggling. My, my, not right. <laughs> <laughs> Old dickles. <laughs> so what is your, what's your favorite lo- like current line of whiskey, right? Like, um, okay. Mash bill two or like old force or whiskey row or something like that. I know you drink a lot of dusties mm-hmm. cause I've watched videos of the podcast. Yeah. And I know you've got like Dusty's galore. He brought out birth year bottles for Anthony Starr. Yeah, I try. I try to do that for every. That's I, awesome. I, I sat down with Coleman Domingo from uh, Fear the Walking Dead, mm-hmm. and we drank. Uh, I think he was born in seventy nine or something. We we drank uh, Old Turkey, and so okay. for, for the show, the two things I spend money on uh, is definitely not the wardrobe. It's the the. the <laughs> It's the, it's the travel equipment. And, and if we're sitting down with a guest, I try to get a bottle that'll mean something to them. Sure. Yeah. So uh, a lot of birth year bottles. I, yeah, we were supposed to sit down with D.L. Hughley and I spent all this money on a birth year bottle oh. and then he canceled. So, oh, no. uh, cause That's a lot terrible. of time, Anthony Starr, like he, he's not a huge whiskey guy. So sure. I, the only way I know to make it mean something mm-hmm. is if it means something to them. So if yeah. I just brought them Pappy or, or B tech, they may not realize what they're right. drinking. Yeah, of significance course. On that. yeah. So if I, if I get at their birth year bottle and, and, uh, then it, maybe it means something more to them. Right. And, it's and also, we have I like, think, we have a better conversation, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, and I think that the, if you bring Pappy or B tech, honestly, it's less relevant for them because they can probably just afford that if they wanted, right? Like True. that stuff does sit as a trophy in a store in a big city at way overpriced yeah so if they wanted they can walk in and say yeah i'll pay twenty three hundred dollars for whatever it is sure um but if you bring them something that basically is unobtainable yeah outside of like in being into whiskey that's a yeah that's you're not gonna walk cooler. into a store and be like oh wow that's my birthday 1973 yeah. turkey yeah. yeah that's really that's a good idea that's a really good idea so how are you what were you asking around that you said that he what's your brings favorite your line mouth? of whiskey right now oh. from anyone yeah. that's currently made like that's still made not that's a dusty not something like that so uh, my i think the most impressive and the brand that can do no wrong brown foreman's killing it on all yeah, sides. i agree yeah yeah brown, brown foreman has not made a bad decision in five years yeah I beam completely. beam had the disaster of canceling old, old granddad then bringing it back and deciding not to cancel it and then raising the price from bookers from 50 to 100 bucks then yeah. backtracking it back down to 75 yeah. every brand and what let's let's not even go down the wild turkey pass some, there's been some <laughs> some frustrating developments there for a lot of consumers uh, but Brown Foreman can do no wrong. Early times, Bald and Bond, although it was created for bars, it is a solid one liter, twenty dollar. And here in, in Texas, it's twenty bucks. Like it's it's yeah. a couple bucks cheaper. I think you guys said it was twenty three at one point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it you was created. That, right. It was created for the bars. It wasn't meant yeah. for us, but it found a home with us as well, which is even right. it, that's an even bigger win for them because not only are they getting the case movement from bars, they also get consumers yeah. buying. Uh, Jack Daniels, the barrel proof releases. I know the Jack yeah. Daniel barrel proof ride picks are coming. Uh, there's Brown. And of course, uh, we, we had Campbell Brown on from old Forrester. Sure. Uh, you cannot go wrong from their $20 rye, which is yep. ridiculously good. on yeah. proof to, to of course, 1920, 1910, uh, Brown Foreman's it, they're gods right now. And, and they, and they don't, and they haven't spent any money on a celebrity endorsement. And I'm sure that's coming eventually. Right. So, uh, well, yeah, they, that well, was, they, they spent some money with Statesman, but it was a while back. Yeah. That was a tough call. I take that back. They didn't make I, before I said they, they can do no wrong. Sure. You reminded me. They did. The, the, the Statesman film was a bit of a farce for sure, but, but they, then they dropped the rye and made up for it. Like it never happened. Well, Here's the thing with states. I don't actually have a problem with statesmen yeah. because it helped them expand their current brand. And then they continued the whiskey row. Yep. If so, the story that I heard about statesmen was that the idea that they partnered with the film and blah, 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 blah. The, the fact that they did that got them into casinos and bars that they couldn't get into before because it was attached to a movie that was doing well at the time. Right. Yeah. Sure. So I, I, this is, they ahead. should have done, sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. The, they should have done statesman first, 1920, 1910 that's That's, but statesman came out after 1920 and 1920 was a banger that's yeah that's so but yeah but it was i mean glendronic they did a statesman glendronic scotch release too and that was fantastic sure well i dude i think it's funny because obviously we are huge like brown for if we if we have one distillery that we 
like the product and the business side that they're pulling off. We right get now. told so much that we're probably paid for by Braun Foreman. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not true. For, yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> they won't respond. So yeah. anyways, no, but the, the Brown Foreman stuff, realistically, they're like the king, like even if, so what a lot of the things you just referenced were a lot of their available, easy to find. Easier yeah. You're walking anywhere. They're, they're just there. They're also absolutely murdering the limited, the limited edition yeah, game. At least between King of Kentucky and President's Choice, those two bottles as special whiskeys. Yeah, President's Choice is one seventy five, but they release literally like three hundred to four hundred bottles at a time. Yep, King of Kentucky being middle two hundred range or price range is one of the best whiskeys I think they annually make at this point. Yeah, um, being Across, around yeah, fifteen all year bourbon. old, all single barrel, all barrel proof, and all like incredibly well aged whiskey. Um, Brown Foreman, Jackie Zykin, Campbell, all, the, the people that are at Brown Foreman right now will be written about in whiskey history, yeah. 100%. Jackie Zykin will go down, it's, it's a matter of time, as a, uh, an icon of whiskey. I believe so. And, uh, um, she, she is principally and specifically responsible for a lot of their pricing. Yep. The I was going to say that in the rye. She fought yep. for it to be in the $20 uh, price point. Yeah. You know what else she fought for? She fought, despite the fact that consumers were asking for it already, but she fought for barrel strength. Old Forrester picks. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Jackie Zykan is, uh, she should be a bigger ho household name in bourbon. And I, I think yeah. she's still very well respected, but I think people should be talking about her the way they talk about Jim Rutledge or the way they talk about sure. uh, Brent Elliott. I mean, like, or, or Al Young, who, by yeah, the way, yeah. was just an ambassador. Like he, right. I mean, I, listen, hold on. Before, I'm not, <laughs> yeah. he, pull wasn't, back, pull back. He, he wasn't just an ambassador. Yeah. Yeah. He, I did a, I had a great conversation with him. We did a great episode. And, uh, but his role, she, she arguably is more involved with the development of products. And I yeah. think yeah, she's steering the ship. Yes. A hundred percent. She's murdering it. Like, yeah, she's, I, I completely agree. I think Jackie's Zykin will go down as a legend. And the funny thing is I think Jackie's Zykin is one of the reasons that I say, I think whiskey's t like turning less serious. Yeah. She has a personality. Yeah. Jackie Zykin isn't, and I'm not saying anything bad about him, but Jackie Zykin isn't Harlan Wheatley, right? Harlan Wheatley comes across like an engineer or like a very technical, calculated, like very literate yeah. person. Jackie Zykin is very good at her job and comes across like she'd be a blast to hang out yeah, with. Yeah. If she was the bartender serving you a drink, you would think, awesome. Yeah. yeah. That she just talked and having she's, a good time. She's, yeah. she's got a hell of a lot going on in the whiskey world with the personality and with her palate and with her ability to obviously they respect her the yeah. old force arrive being 20 dollars or 25 bucks yeah. is absolutely insane yeah and that's because of her that's crazy i think she's amazing but yeah I, I i need to i need to reach out to her uh she she hasn't been on she should be on we should be talking about her more um but listen, uh, this show is normally about an hour. We're about an hour and a half in. Okay, uh, we're good at that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's okay. I, I I could keep talking to you guys all night. Uh, I do want to ask, what's next for you guys? What's on the the plate? When can our listeners check you guys out so they can unsubscribe to me and subscribe to you? <laughs> no, no, no. This no is one the, unsubscribes from this anything. Is, this is That's, the best part. Is there's just room for everyone, yeah. which is why the platform's so cool. That's we literally that the shirt. best part. Rising tide shit. Yeah. It's just, it's all about everyone coming up. Like yeah. no one's unsubscribing from one channel to right. go watch another There's no reason to. And, I mean, we're here to have fun with whiskey yeah. and hang out with people yeah. and we can do that across different platforms and, uh, you know, different videos and personalities. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that because I, I thought I was, I've, I went ahead and unsubscribed from bourbon pursuit because I thought, <laughs> I thought Makes there sense. was like a maximum amount I could subscribe to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Well, you can find us on YouTube, uh, Bourbon Junkies, Instagram's Bourbon Junkies, Patreon's Bourbon Junkies. Yep. Um, we got videos every uh, Monday and Thursday. Yep. 1130. Can't go wrong. Tuesday nights, we do a live stream. It's just pretty much more of this. Yep. Uh, same format. Yep. Um, us some drinking some whiskey, hanging out with the community, having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's pretty, for us, it's pretty straightforward right now. We're trying to make things happen. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, like you said earlier, the pandemic shut our building down this year. Hopefully early next year, we'll be able to build a building. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so needless to say, we got more content coming. Eventually we'll probably, we're talking about eventually doing a podcast as well. Yep. And uh, when we do, if you want to come hang out, that would be amazing. 
Yeah, be well, very good uh, for us. <laughs> I, I've got about four four months before my schedule completely frees up, and I'll be traveling all over. So. Perfect. Uh, well, when you come to Michigan, let us know. Yeah. 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 It sounds great. It's yeah. cool distillery that we know that you should work with. There's right? a very cool distillery in Michigan that is awesome to work with. So. Yeah. Well, cool. I appreciate you guys. And uh, I'll see you guys on your own channel soon in the comment <laughs> section. Sounds good. Thanks, Thank man. You. Appreciate it. Cheers, guys. Me. Enjoy the bottle. Oh, Cheers. we will. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Balcony's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more.